Welcome back to video two of our brake upgrade on my F30 335. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Welcome back to video two of our brake upgrade series. Now, in the rear, as you can see, I haven't upgraded my rotors yet like I did to the front. So today, we're gonna add these StopTech rotors. And as we did in the front, we have these EVC ceramic brake pads. So with that, let's get started. Now, before we get started, I do want to say that this job is going to be done with basic hand tools. You'll notice that we're using a lift today. That's more for better camera angles and whatnot. So if you're doing this on a jack and jack stands, it is perfectly fine and safe to do. And if you don't know which one to get, we'll leave some helpful links down in the description. With that, let's get started. Now, if your car's like mine, you have the M Sport brake in the front from the factory. And then for whatever reason, on some of the M Sport, they give you the base brake. So this is actually going to apply to more people than even the front brake. So the first thing we need to do is take off this retaining clip. So if you take a screwdriver, all you need to do is just pry it like that and it's gonna pop right off. We're gonna set that over here to the side. Now what we need to do is we need to remove the brake caliper. So it's held in by two bolts in the back. They are 16 millimeter. I would highly suggest using a half inch um, ratchet because this is gonna give you the best leverage. So at this point, I was gonna have Zach just sit on the ground under the car, but it's not really the most comfortable position. So what we're gonna do just to give you a better idea of what's going on, we're just gonna put the car up in the air. Again, a lift is not necessary for this. So with that, let's put the car up and check it out. Okay, so if you look over here, this is the first 16 mil bolt that needs to be removed and then up there. Now, one important thing, when you remove these, you wanna replace them. So before you get started on this project, you want to make sure that you have replacements all ready to go. And these are normally pretty tight. Now for this top one, I like to loosen it while this bolt is still in. So works best when you loosen one. And I will say one, one thing is that leverage is a little bit difficult to get back here sometimes. So. Uh, you might want to have some kind of extension on your ratchet if you can. Okay, we have it just about all the way out. Once we have these all the way out, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little piece of a hanger that I found in the shop and we're going to bend it up just like that and we're going to feed it through one of these holes just to make sure that the caliper isn't hanging by the brake line. Okay, so we're going to suspend that just like that. Okay, now that we have it in this state, I'm going to take the rotor off. You are going to need a six millimeter Allen bit to fit in here. And you shouldn't really need anything to hold this from spinning. Um, very important note, you wanna make sure that your emergency brake is off because otherwise you're gonna have a really hard time. So here's a look at that little bolt and basically all this does, it just holds your rotor in place. The next thing you want to do, I like to just kind of feel to see if it's going to be easy to move or not. And this one looks like it doesn't really want to go. So what I'm going to do with the rubber side of my little hammer here, I'm just going to lightly tap around here and just try to see if we can break it loose. Okay. Now at this point, this rotor is pretty stuck. It doesn't really want to go anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lightly tap this and then I'm going to spin it and lightly tap it. Um, you don't ever want to go crazy on this part um, just because you don't want to accidentally bend or anything. Uh, also, I'm using the rubber side here. There it goes and with that, broke it loose a little bit. Now, as you saw, I wasn't really hitting it all that hard. Um, you just want to kind of knock it to try to get it loose. Now, one thing that can happen is your, your emergency brake here 
which is this little brake shoe right there. This expands when you have that e-brake up. Sometimes it'll get a little bit like seized and hung up around here. So if that happens, what I've done in the past is I've taken a screwdriver and I've just run it along this area right here. So as you can see, you, you can see why it didn't want to come off. I mean, this is all corroded and disgusting. This I believe is the original rotor from 2012 when my car was manufactured. So it's been on there a little while. So while we're here, we're gonna just do our best to clean up the area a little bit. Um, you can see I have the wheel stud conversion. So it makes it a little bit tricky, but we're just gonna do a, a, just a basic cleaning. Now it's time to swap out our brake pads and our brake wear sensor. So I'm going to first get our sensor out of the way here. And just for reference, this is only something that's on one side. It's not on both sides. So you're only going to have it on your passenger rear and your driver front. So I'm just gonna take that and let that hang down there for a second. And then what I like to do is I like to get a, a bolt and I like to just lightly bolt the caliper up and it just gives you a nice little work area. So you're not just suspending it in the air the entire time you're trying to work. Now, sometimes you can get, get this brake pad in the front and you can just pop it out. Sometimes what I like to do is just get a screwdriver and just pop it out from a little bit from one side and then a little bit from the other side. Until it works its way out. And you can just take that out and toss it. Then once you've done that, you can take your old brake pad in the back Again, just carefully, just pry it out. Just like that. Now, as you'll see, a very important note, the one that goes in the piston is going to be the one that has the little metal contraption. Next, what we're gonna do, you can just slide this apart like that, off the pins. Now, it's very important, BMW notes not to grease these pins. You wanna just make sure that you clean them with some brake cleaner. Um, and if they're damaged in any way, you wanna replace them. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to do is you need to compress this piston. Now, if you really try, most of the time you can do it by hand. It's not super easy. So what I would recommend doing is getting some kind of C-clamp. You can even get something like this. It's not super fancy, but um, it'll still do the job. So you just very slowly just compress that until everything is flush like that. Next, you're gonna clean this little area over here and over here with some brake cleaner. There's also a little part like that on the back. And you're going to also clean the piston itself. And we're gonna put a little bit of lubrication there as well. Okay, so we're going to put a very small amount over here. And then also on the face of this, now it's important to note, you're not supposed to get it on the boot because they say that the boot can swell. You don't want that to happen. And also, over here again, just very small amount. You also want to clean the back here with some brake cleaner and then put a very small amount again. Back here, there's going to be a brake pad touching this area. Okay, so once you're done that, I have this sitting on a control arm and I also have it suspended there so that there's no pressure on the brake line. Next, you wanna clean your guide pins. Some people take them out, you don't really need to. So we're just going to hit them with some brake cleaner. Um, one important thing is that you're not supposed to grease these. So don't put any grease when you go to put them back. Next, you're going to clean this surface, this surface, this surface, this surface, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now, you just wanna do it by hand with brake cleaner. You don't want to use any kind of wire brush because you don't really wanna take any extra material off. So at this time, we're going to just spray it down really good and I have a clean towel we're gonna to wipe it with. And then we're going to put a very small amount of our lubricant on there. Okay. So Put a little bit here, a little bit there. I'm just gonna do a little dab over here, a little dab over here, and then I'm gonna come back and rub this in.
Now so that we don't get anything dirty that we just cleaned, we're gonna just slide this back in, just like that. So now that we have the caliper assembled right here, we just pressed it back in. I'm gonna put a little grease under there, and over here. Just make sure that everything's going to slide. Whatever you do, don't get any right there. Okay. Okay, so then you get this here, and you press it in while lining it up. It's a little bit tricky, but just keep at it and you'll get it. Perfect. Okay, so then we're gonna do the same thing on the other pad. Just gonna grease it up on the edge here. Just a little bit, a little bit goes a long way. I'm gonna take that, just set it in your caliper like so. Now at this stage, we could take our caliper and just hang it. We'll get our rotor set up. We'll put the caliper back on and we'll be good to go. Okay, then we're gonna take our rotor. We're gonna put it on, make sure that you have this hole lined up, for this little set screw. And as you'll notice, these are the StopTech rotors that have um, the slots in them. So I'm really, really excited for these. Okay, we're gonna snug up this bolt here. Then we can torque it down to 16 Newton meters. Okay, 16.1, close enough. So then we can take our uh, caliper here and using new bolts, we can bolt this up and torque it down. So when looking at my brake wear sensor, you'll see that everything is still intact because the brake pads in the rear really weren't all that old. Um, but if you look here, the plastic is still intact. So this is still a perfectly fine sensor. Um, if you are gonna replace it, which I actually was planning on, but this is fine, so we'll just save that for another day. All you need to do is just follow the line. It just goes back here, around, and then it plugs in right under here. So to get to the little box that houses the connection, all you need to do is just pull off that 10 millimeter nut and then you can just pull this up and then you can just retrace the line. But like I said, this is still fine. So what I'm going to do, you'll notice that these brake pads have a little cutout in them, is if I take the one in the back, all you need to do is just press it into place. Okay, just like that. And then I can put this back in my bleeder valve. Then we're just gonna reinstall our retaining spring. Okay, just like that. So as you can see, not only does it look incredible, it's going to perform amazing, and also I'm super excited about less brake dust while still having the performance. Now one of the last things you have to do, especially when you're doing new rotors and also pads, you have to properly bed the brakes in, which is going to help them perform and also last the longest. So for more information on that, we have EBC's specific recommendation down in the description. Once you're done doing anything on your brakes, most important step is to pump your brakes. You wanna fill those lines back up with brake fluid. Otherwise, when you start to drive away, you're gonna hit the brake, it's gonna to go to the floor, and you're not going to stop. Um, the other thing you wanna do is pop your hood and just check your reservoir, make sure that your level is still fine. And if you need to, you can bleed your brakes, and we have a video down in the description that'll walk you through that process. Okay, now that we've changed the rear brakes, we need to tell the car that we did a brake job. So just press your start stop button one time, go into accessory mode, wait a couple seconds for everything to just clear out. Then you're gonna press and hold this little button over here. It takes about 10 seconds or so to pop up. And this is the service menu. So we're just going to keep hitting it until we get to what we need. So here we are, at rear brake pads. Um, as you see, it said we had 28,000 miles left on the old one, but we didn't like the old ones. So we're gonna press and hold. And you let go and press and hold again. Reset is in progress. 
Okay, reset successful, and we are good to go. Once again, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports for all of the tools and parts we use in today's video. Be sure to see the links in the description. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.